Hey guys, this is Larkin Wilson, media manager here at Anglers All, and today we're gonna talk about small creek fly fishing. So the point of today's video is to lay out what we're looking for in a creek fly fishing setup, the basic gear, fly rod, fly lines, and the flies you'd need to get started. This is part one of a two-part series. Next week we'll be shooting with Jimmy Juliana out on the water. Before we get into anything else, let's talk about why we would go to small creeks to begin with. When we have rivers like the South Platte, the Blue River, the Taylor River down south, with giant fish in there, why would we go look for skinny water? People come to Colorado for the big tail waters, for the giant freestone. So why are we covering this water in between? The reason is multifaceted. First and foremost, to get away from the crowds. As much as uh, we like Deckers and everybody else likes Deckers, it's good to get away from the crowds every now and then, not to take anything away from the South Platte, but some people are fishing for a more serene experience, and here in Colorado that can be a tough ask on certain days, especially on the weekends. So fly fishing small creeks gives you the opportunity to get off the map a little bit, get away from the crowds and explore less pressured water. The second reason fly fishing small creeks is a fantastic thing to do is it gets you out of your comfort zone. You have to explore, you have to get into new water and figure out where the fish are. I think we as fly fishermen start to get into a little bit of a rut when it comes to our fishing. We go to similar places that we know have worked and use similar tactics that have produced for us in the past. And while that got us to the place that we are now in our fly fishing careers, it won't take us to the next place. So getting out of your comfort zone, doing a little bit of exploration is gonna help you grow as an angler. The third reason, finding new species. You're not gonna find a ton of cutthroat laying around in lower elevations. You have to go into the higher elevations or at least go off the map a little bit. The other reason to get into fly fishing small creeks is for preserving the safety of the fish here in our local waters. So as the summer progresses and the water continues to heat up, it's gonna get more and more dangerous for the fish. When we get into the mid 60s, they really start to stress out and it gets lethal as we work up from there. So protecting the health of the fish is gonna be huge this summer and every summer, especially during low water years out here in Colorado. So getting off of the local tailwaters, off of the freestones where the water is warmed up, getting into higher elevations, more oxygenated, quicker moving water is going to give you an opportunity to find places where the fish are healthy and happy and not stressed out to where you can catch fish and not have to worry about the mortality quite as much as you would when fishing in water situations that are a hair warmer like the Colorado River during a low water July. When it comes to choosing a fly rod for fishing in small creeks, you want to really consider the locations you'll be fishing. So if you're fishing the skinnier water, stuff that's no wider than this desk across, you really don't need a long rod. You're gonna hang it up in the trees, you're gonna spook fish when you hold it out over top of them, it's just not really gonna serve you the way that it would in a larger river or a lake, something like that. Instead, you're gonna to try to keep your rod as short as possible, especially when you're fishing places with overhang, places with a lot of vegetation, anywhere where you can hang up flies. The shorter your rod is, in general, the more control you're gonna have over your outfit. So when you're throwing a dry dropper set up on a creek that's three feet across, you do not need a nine foot rod to reach across. You only need something in the seven to eight foot range at most. So if we're looking at a general purpose outfit for creek fishing, we're gonna look at a two to a three weight in the seven to eight foot range. The real sweet spot for creek fly fishing is gonna be a rod that's around seven and a half feet in a three weight. You can go with a faster action graphite rod or you can go the fiberglass route. In general, graphite is gonna give you a little bit more control over the flies, a little bit more accuracy, and it's gonna to respond to your hook sets and your cast a little bit better. They're, they are going to be more forgiving, which is huge, especially for people who are just getting into creek fishing and you're still trying to figure out your casting methods. The other option you can take is to go with a fiberglass rod. And the F in fiberglass stands for fun because that's what these rods are all about. Delicate presentations, really feeling the fight with small fish. 
they're just fun rods. If you really want to fish the small creeks for with little dry flies, go with a two to a three weight in the six foot to seven and a half foot range. You're gonna have a blast. The fiberglass rod's gonna be a great option if you're trying to lay down little dry flies, but if you're going dry dropper or if you're just getting into the creek fly fishing, I would certainly recommend a graphite rod. You're gonna get a lot more out of it and it's gonna be a little more multi-purpose than the fiberglass would be. The next thing we can talk about is a reel. When it comes to fly fishing in small creeks, the reel is not unimportant, but it's not the most important thing. So in order of importance, your fly rod, your fly line, and then your reel is down here a good bit lower because while it does matter for small creeks, it doesn't matter nearly as much as if you needed that drag for wearing out fish in the South Platte or getting into a saltwater environment where you really have to burn down fish using your drag. When I look at reels for fly fishing in small creeks, what I'm looking for is something with a minimal weight that's really rugged and can hold up in all those environments. Because a lot of times, guys, you're gonna beat your gear up when you're getting off the beaten trail. Between crawling under trees and uh, it, it's, it's easy to beat gear up, so you need a durable reel that's lightweight for walking into these environments, getting into all kinds of interesting bow and arrow casts at different angles. You need something that's a low profile, low weight, something that is not gonna get in the way or weigh you down as you're exploring the creeks. The odds of you needing to tighten down your drag to fight fish in small creeks is fairly low. A lot of times, your fly line might not even leave your reel. When you're fishing small creeks, you really don't have to let out a lot of line. And the more line you have on the water in general, the more chance you have at spooking fish or picking up drag in your flies, which is the last thing we wanna do when we're, we're targeting spookier fish. When it comes to putting that outfit together, first look at the rod, then the line, and then the reel. Okay, next let's talk about the fly lines that you can use for fishing in small creeks. In general, the fly line is not going to be as important as it would be in a larger river situation, a lake situation, salt water, something where you have a lot of line out at any given time. With fly fishing small creeks, there's a good chance you won't have a ton of line on the water at any time. There is also a chance you might not even pull the line off the reel. Now that said, while you might not need your line for 90% of a trip, that 10% you do need it for, it has to be the right line. If you can't nail, if you can't nail your presentations at a distance for these fish in creeks, you won't catch them. If you can walk up on fish in low clear water and see them and find a casting lane at them, there's a good chance they've already seen you. So being able to stay back and air out a cast and put it on top of those fish is gonna be huge. So while your fly line might not always be important, when it does matter, it matters the most. And that's why you gotta have something that matches up with the rod. So slower action rods, the fiberglass, the bamboo maybe, you're looking at something with a lot less aggressive taper, something that's gonna lay out really delicately and present flies the way a natural insect would land on the water. So looking at a little less aggressive fly lines, we're gonna look at something like the smooth trout from Scientific Anglers, or even the light line from Rio. So next up are lines for graphite or faster action rods, lines that are designed specifically for fly fishing in creeks. So we're looking at lines like the Rio Creek and the Scientific Anglers Creek Trout. Both fantastic options, a little bit more aggressive in the taper to where you're able to bunch bugs at a short distance. As far as a good all around line, there's definitely a couple of options. The Amplitude Infinity from Scientific Anglers, probably one of the best all around fly lines that we've seen, much less for small creeks and, and faster rods. We also have lines like the Rio Premier Gold or the Rio Elite Perception. Okay, so we've gone through the fly rod you'll need, the reel that you can look at, the fly lines you need. Now let's take a look as we work down at our leader and tippet setup. We don't wanna overcomplicate things when it comes to choosing leaders and tippet. At the end of the day, you're just getting your flies tied on. The presentation's gonna be more important than anything else. When it comes to keeping your drives afloat and keeping your nymphs down, having a nylon leader connecting into nylon tippet that attaches to your dry fly is going to help it stay more buoyant and also keep it afloat 
when you have that connection from a fluorocarbon tippet off the bend of that dry fly down to a heavier dropper, something like a Frenchy jig, Rose's tag jig, something that's gonna go straight to the bottom and drop right into those feeding zones for these fish. The other place you'll need fluorocarbon tip is when you're fishing emergers or you're drowning flies like ants, gnats, and beetles into the surface film. So you don't want them to sit on top, you want them to go just below the surface of the water where those fish are browsing around looking for food as they look up for things to fall into the water. For me, I would say that nylon leaders and then fluorocarbon tippet are a couple of must-haves. And the main sizes you're gonna stay in for both are the 4X to 6X range. Next, let's talk about flies. So this is the fun part when it comes to small creek fishing. It's gonna be a lot of action. A lot of fish will come up for splashy rises on dry flies. They'll come screeching out from underneath cut banks to eat your nymphs. It's a blast to watch, especially in clear waters. So let's first start with talking about dry flies because they're probably gonna be the most important part of your creek fly fishing game in the fly department, right? The majority of the fish you catch are probably going to be on dry flies, which is a blast in these small creeks. Dry flies that are gonna be especially productive in the creeks are gonna be something like terrestrials, your ants, beetles, hoppers, stuff like that, that it's big crunchy bugs that come out as the weather warms up. Fish oftentimes as these creeks thaw out, they will sit in channels and look at the banks underneath foliage and wait for something to drop in on top of them that comes out of the trees. And a lot of times these ants and beetles and hoppers are crawling around on this vegetation and when a strong wind comes through, they're immediately knocked into the water and then they become easy prey for fish. So fishing around places where you know these creatures to be living and where they would fall out of is the place to start. Now, as we move through the spring months and the weather continues to get warmer, we're looking at larger flies, more of your hoppers and larger beetles, the big, crunchy, nasty stuff that fish just gorge on during the heart of the summer to pack on calories for the winter. And then as we get through the warmer weather months of the summer, we start to transition back down to smaller bugs, the smaller ants and beetles, back into your caddis, mayflies, midges, just sizing down as the weather cools off and then sizing up as the weather heats up. But having a good variety of caddis and mayflies, even if it's something standard like your elk hair caddis and your parachute atoms, is gonna go a long way because these terrestrials that are fun to fish are not always in the water, especially when you go in more of those fringe seasons of spring and fall. And being able to cover those bases of any flies that could be in the water is gonna be huge. Next, let's talk about the nymphs that we need. Nymphs that we're gonna tie off via a dropper from our larger dry flies. So I like to use flies that are a little bit flashy and trashy, stuff that has a heavy tungsten bead that's gonna get down quick and stay down. So fly met recommendations that I would make a good, good all-purpose flies, the Frenchy, Thread Frenchy, Iron Lotus, Rainbow Warriors. Then if we get into more natural patterns, looking at flies like the Copper John, the Hairsier, Pheasant Tails, those are gonna be more the way to go. If the fish have the time to investigate your offering, you wanna go more natural. If they don't, go a little bit flashier, something that's gonna grab their attention and induce a strike without a ton of extra thought from the fish. So in summary here, guys, fly fishing small creeks is a blast. It gets you away from the crowds, gets you into safer water for the fish during the warmer weather months, and it is a new chance to explore new water, to go out and see new stuff and really get after it. Doing something different is what helps us grow as anglers. It's what helps us move forward in the game. If there's anything we can do to help you guys get started, please give us a call here at the shop, shoot us an email, DM, carrier pigeon, you name it and we'll get you the information you need. We've spent a lot of time on the creeks, so if there's anything we can do to help, give us a shout, let's get you hooked up and enjoy in that small water because it is a blast and you'll see exactly what we mean. This is Larkin Wilson for Anglers All. I'll catch you guys in part two.